So have you ever heard the phrase, everyone's a little bi? Well, if you haven't, then buckle up buttercup because you're going to go to school today <laughs> when it comes to bisexuality. Um, but seriously, though, this is going to be more of an educational podcast. So if you don't like learning, bye-bye. <laughs> because um, like I said, it's going to be an educational podcast. So if this is something that you find boring or whatever the case may be, then this may not be the opposite for you. But hey, I would say, even if it's not for you, try to stick around. Um, you might learn something. Um, so yeah, hope you do stay. Um, but anyways, I personally think that the topic is fascinating. And we're going to unpack whether bisexuality is real or not. So that being said, welcome to the Deep Penetration Podcast. Um, my name is Danny. In case you don't know who I am, um, I am a self-esteem and love coach that works with gay and bisexual men. Um, only thing that I ask is that you subscribe to the podcast and my other social media platforms, which helps me to continue to do what I love to do, which is connect with all of you guys. So tell a friend, go subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will provide you with all the information that you need in the description of this episode below. So let us get into it. So being that I am bisexual myself and have identified that way since I was 18, I am 35 now. I've always heard the phrase, everyone's a little bisexual. And to be honest with you, I never really gave it any credence because as, well, actually, I don't want to, okay, well, I didn't really give it that much credit, um, but as I've immersed myself in the world of social media and have been blessed enough to connect with people from all different backgrounds and generations, I have noticed more and more guys and girls um, putting out content that most would describe as being bi-friendly or sexually fluid inspired videos. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of torn about it, right? Um, let me know how you guys feel about this too. Um, and if you guys have noticed what it is that I am talking about, because on one hand, I'm excited to see more by visibility, right? I think that's amazing. But on the other hand, I can't help but feel that some of these people are using it for clout or for likes or for subscription, uh, for subscriptions um, or follows. Is follows the right term? I don't know. Ray, you're the younger one. Follows, right? Not subscriptions. Followers, right. Yeah, clout. See, I got some of the words right. Um, but here's the thing. Yeah, I'm torn, like I said, right? Because I've watched videos of guys with girlfriends and in that are like, for example, like they're in the Midwest and they have their football jerseys on and they're now cropped football jerseys, which I don't ever remember football jerseys being cropped. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. And they are pretending to like kiss their male best friend. Um, I've seen men who identify as straight appeal to the queer community by posting incredibly suggestive um, content and using nudity as a way to to attract a larger male following, which when you really think about it, it's kind of interesting to stop and think about what heterosexual men think that we as queer men prioritize um, or are attracted to. Now, look, they're not 100% wrong because yes, obviously I think gay men and queer men like um, physique, the male physique, uh, but it's not all we think about. Okay, well, at least some of us. Um, and like I said, you know, I can't say that I blame them um, in our endeavor to free ourselves from the chains of sexual oppression. I sometimes feel we kind of exploded in the opposite direction. It often feels that that almost everything in the queer community is attributed to to sex or has this kind of sexual undertone um, to it. But let me be clear. In no way am I shaming anyone who enjoys expressing their sexuality open. It's just an observation, 
right? Um, I am someone who is far more reserved in that area. Um, as for me, you know, I see sexuality as a facet of who I am, not who I am. So all those questions got me thinking, right? Is everyone a little bi? There is a main point that I want to discuss in this episode. Um, I think it's so easy to kind of just like derail and start talking about a million different things because I have a tendency of doing that a lot. And I wanted to make sure that I was being very clear and direct with what I was trying to talk about. There is, it's highly likely that I will have a squirrel moment at some point in this episode. Um, so I'm just forewarning you. Um, I'm doing it right now because <laughs> I said squirrel. I literally feel like my spirit animal is that little squirrel from Ice Age. That's me inside all the time. Um, so yeah, see, squirrel moment. It already happened. I said that it was not, I was going to try not to, and I already did it. So it's fine. Um, <clears throat> and also just so you guys don't think that I'm crazy and I'm like talking to myself in the corner over here, like there's, there's people in the room too. Um, anyways, so the main point here that I wanted to talk about is this idea that bisexuality is not real, right? Um, or the idea that bisexuality does not exist. <sighs> I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people tell me that bisexuality is not a real thing. Um, and the most common things that I hear are, oh, it's just a phase, you'll grow out of it, or you just haven't accepted the fact that you're gay, um, or you're confused and that's dangerous, or you must sleep with a lot of people since you can't make up your mind. Um, and look, I'm not going to lie, a lot of those things when I would hear them were pretty hurtful. But I have learned over the years to handle those situations with empathy and understanding. And as Alex Hermosi says in his podcast, um, anger comes from a lack of understanding. Um, and in my position, right, and the career that I chose and the field that I am in, I have chosen to educate people in those situations and also try to understand their perspective. I think that what we have lost in this generation is the ability to have a bipartisan conversation, to have a conversation where multiple opinions are in the room and everybody gets the respect they deserve and the ability to communicate their feelings, what they think, their perspectives without being attacked, without being canceled, without being basically torn down and told that they no longer deserve to exist on this planet because they don't agree with what somebody else may think or whatever the case may be, right? But at the end of the day, we all have different perspectives. At the end of the day, we all are living in a different reality. And what I mean by that is reality is, sure, technically by definition, there is an objective reality, but most of our realities are subjective, right? So what I mean by that is that you and I can be looking at the same freaking cloud and I can see a penis in the cloud and you can see a teddy bear, right? Like we're going to experience that in a totally different way. But all of that to say, you know, Understanding and empathy is a really part, important part of educating. Um, and if we can't come to a meeting of the minds, then I walk away from the conversation knowing I did my best. So how can we prove that bisexuality exists? Well, I can subjectively say um, it exists because I exist, right? But that won't convince the crowd that won't convince the mob. So let's look at this a little bit more objectively, shall we? In order to prove that bisexuality actually exists, we have to understand the terms. And essentially what the term binary means, right? So binary is related to um, or involving two things. 
this would be in reference to heterosexuality and homosexuality um, and what I'm talking about, right? So hetero comes from the Greek word heteros, which means another, and homo comes from the Greek word homos, which means same. Both of these are combined with the term sexus from Latin, and boom, you have a binary. The interesting thing is <clears throat> the first recorded use of the word heterosexual was actually in a pamphlet in 1869 um, by somebody named Carl Maria Kurt Benny, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Now to keep this brief, because I don't want to bore you with like, you know, a college history lesson, but he was basically a badass. And in his day, uh, well, he was a badass in his day, and he wrote a lot about his personal views on the sodomy laws at the time. <clears throat> it was actually believed um, he was queer himself, and therefore, here's the plot twist. Um, in her book, By, by Julia Shaw, um, where she also references um, this very interesting piece of history, um, Julia Shaw states that Kurt Benny created the binary term to explain the difference between same-sex desires and sexual behaviors, and the sentence reads, this means that a gay rights activist coined the word heterosexual as a byproduct of creating the word homosexual. We need to pause on that for a minute, right? That means that technically the term heterosexual came about because this individual was trying to define homosexuality or give it a word, a term, in order to create better understanding, okay? So let's be clear here. This does not mean heterosexuality and homosexuality didn't exist up until this point, okay? I want to be clear on that. It just means that the terms that we use today were coined in the late 19th century, which I would consider to be pretty recent from a historical perspective. I also want to be clear I'm not saying that, you know, heterosexuality is below homosexuality because the term was created in order to create better understanding of homosexuality. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just stating the facts. I'm just stating the, you know, the the hardcore truth or whatever the hell you want to call it um, of where the terms came about, right, or how the terms came about. So again, let me be clear. It doesn't mean one is better than the other. It's just how we started to use the terms. If that's not enough, then look up a man named Alfred Kinsley. Um, and essentially, Alfred was a biologist um, with a PhD from Harvard, and he conducted multiple different studies over his lifetime, but his most notable work focused on human sexuality and his most famous work was done between 1940 and 1950 using the Kinsey scale to measure sexuality, right? So if you've never seen or heard of this scale, I would highly recommend looking it up. I've mentioned it in a previous episode. Um, and I would highly recommend taking the test yourself and being brutally, brutally honest when you're taking that test. Kinsey basically discovered that almost half of the men in the sample um, reported some same-sex desires or experimentation. So due to his findings, he surmised that bisexuality was in fact the default. It wasn't the other, it wasn't the 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 you know, the side option or any of those things. That was the default. Heterosexuality was not the default. Homosexuality was not the default. Bisexuality was actually the default. And think about it. How many gay men do you know that have slept with a woman at some point in their life? You know, even within the community, it is rare to find somebody who hasn't. So much so that they have their own name, right? They're called gold star gays. So 
That being said, how many straight men have experimented with a man? Many of us believe sexuality is on a scale, and therefore, there has to be a middle if we are using that logic. And the way the Kinsey scale works is that it's a numbered system. There are a series of questions that it asks, and depending on how you answer those questions, it places you on the scale. Um, and essentially what it is is that like, I'll make it as simple as possible. You're either fully straight, you're kind of straight, you're in the middle, um, you're kind of gay or you're fully gay, right? And a lot of um, the research that he headed and that he uh, like statistical averages that he found throughout his years of, I think I want to say, and I can totally be making this up, um, but I want to say that he he sampled something like over 18,000 people um, and asked questions about their sexuality and their experiences and all of those things. Um, and he found that a majority of the people had bisexual tendencies. So if you are questioning whether bisexuality exists, it's proven in science, okay? Um, you can look it up. You can read about it. Um, and hi, I'm bisexual. So unless you think that I am a figment of your imagination right now, then I think it's pretty safe to say that it does exist because I exist like I said. Um, but again, if that's not enough for you, there's a science. Do what, do with it what you will. Um, look, at the end of the day, whether you identify as gay, bisexual, lesbian, straight, trans, non-binary, doesn't matter, right? You are legitimate. You are valid. You matter. Um, and that's all that really counts here, right? I think that we have to allow ourselves to create space for others other than ourselves. We are we are so used to kind of being selfish at this point, unfortunately. Um, and a lot of us have very individualistic tendencies in the way that we interact in community and the way that we think. And that's not completely our fault, right? I think a lot of that has to do with kind of socioeconomics and technology and the way that things are being run and all of that stuff, right? And I can get into that too, but it would be like a completely different. See, I'm squirreling again. I am squirreling again. Anyways, I'm going to stop because if not, I can continue for like another 20 or 30 minutes and I'm sure you don't want to be here for another 20, 30 minutes, or maybe you do. I don't know. Um, but that's what the next episode is for. So if you want to hear me talk more, then stick around for the next episode. So bisexuality exists. That's all I have to say. If you don't believe it, you have that right. But you're wrong. Um, <laughs> anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys were able to learn something. Um, make sure that you are subscribing to the podcast if you have not subscribed yet. Make sure that you are subscribing to all my other social media platforms that really helps me in regards to being able to do what it is that I love, which is connect with you guys. I will provide you with all that information in the description of the episode. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any fun, exciting, interesting history about bisexuality or homosexuality or heterosexuality it doesn't really make a difference. Um, I just want to hear from you guys. All right. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night or morning, or whatever the case may be. Um, and I will see you in the next episode.